We are a third of the way through the Big 12 slate, and things are becoming just a little bit more clear. In today's video, we'll look at the latest bracketology projections for Texas Tech men's basketball, as well as the Big 12 outlook for the NCAA tournament. Just how many bids are being projected for the Big 12 in 2023 and 2024? We'll discuss that and much more in today's video. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's R.C. Maxfield here for the Back to 12 podcast. If you haven't already, be sure to like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell to stay in the know on not only Texas Tech men's basketball all year long, but Big 12 men's basketball all year long. We've got game previews and recaps for Texas Tech men's basketball. We'll be doing film breakdowns, discuss the latest breaking news for Texas Tech men's basketball in the Big 12 conference as a whole. And, oh, we'll be going live as well to discuss everything in the Big 12 all year long. So if you want to join the most engaging Texas Tech community and one of the most engaging Big 12 communities here on YouTube, you know what to do. Hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell. All right, before we get into the current Texas Tech men's basketball bracketology outlook, I want to say this. Listen, I know it's super early, but again, you're one third of the way through and the Big 12 is the toughest conference in America. This will change almost every night, it seems like. I understand that. But let's look and see how elevated Texas Tech men's basketball has had in terms of the process of going up in bracketology, because if you remember Early on, before Big 12 play even started, they were a fringe bubble team. And most of the time, they were part of that next four out conversation. That's not the case right now for Texas Tech men's basketball. But before we get into that, predict it for me. Texas Tech men's basketball will be a blank seed in the NCAA tournament. You think they're going to be an eight? You think they go on a little bit of a run and maybe get as high as a five? Maybe you think they just sneak in with the 11 seed? Let me know down in the comments below what seed you think Texas Tech men's basketball will be in the upcoming NCAA tournament. All right, let's look at the latest bracketology for Texas Tech. I've got ESPN, Bracketville, and CBS Sports. Um, it's going to be interesting to see here in the sense of where Texas Tech really goes. And there's one clear spot you want Texas Tech to go, and they're actually not in that region. It's the only region that they're not projected to be in according to any of the bracketology sites. We'll start with ESPN, though. They have Texas Tech as the eighth seed out in the East region against a familiar foe in Boise State. If you know, you know. Uh, Buzo up there. It would be a reunion, him playing one of his former teams in the Texas Tech Red Raiders. That would be up in Brooklyn in the East region, as I mentioned. Now, Bracketville has the Red Raiders as an 11 seed, just squeaking in, honestly. They have Texas Tech as a downward arrow right now, which kind of surprised me. I thought, if anything, they'd be going up. But they have Texas Tech out in the West region facing off against the six-seeded Clemson with that first-round matchup actually being in Pittsburgh. Now, CBS Sports has the Red Raiders as a sixth seed in the Midwest region, and I think Texas Tech fans would like to see this matchup happen. As it stands right now, CBS Sports has the Red Raiders projected to face off against an 11th-seeded Texas A&M Aggie squad, the fighting Buzz Williams down there in uh, College Station. But that matchup would be out in Pittsburgh. It's just basically a reversal of what Brackettville had in a different region, but we won't get started on how those regions work. Now, the clear region that Texas Tech fans should be hoping that Texas Tech gets into if they make the NCAA tournament is actually the South region. And the reason being is this. If you make it to the second weekend, that is in Dallas. I think that's all I have to say. You know where the largest alumni base is for Texas Tech. It's right there in DFW. And if Texas Tech can play there in the second weekend, if they get that far, it's damn near a home court advantage. You remember what happened the year that they went to the Elite Eight with Keenan Evans, Zaire Smith, and Jarrett Culver as freshmen. Obviously, Keenan Evans... Um, didn't end well for Texas Tech in the sense of his toe, but they still got to the Elite Eight. Remember what it was like when they played at the American Airlines Center in downtown Dallas. Absolutely pandemonium, sold out. It was great to see. I would suspect that happens again if Texas Tech was to get there. Now, I will say this. It's still a little early, but right now, in my opinion, call me a homer, whatever you want. Plenty of people did on this week's Big 12 Power Rankings video here on the channel, which you can go check out. Texas Tech has the best resume in the Big 12 right now. If we're strictly talking about Big 12 play, 
prove me wrong. They have a top 25 road win. They have a top 25 home win. They also beat the other team tied for first place at home in the Kansas State Wildcats. Yes, they went down to Houston. I understand they got obliterated by the Cougars. That, that's going to happen to a lot of teams, no doubt about it. And I'm not trying to belittle that win for Houston. I'm really not. But Texas Tech is 4-1 and one right now. They are tied for first place in the Big 12 alongside the Wildcats of Kansas State. Texas Tech has done everything they need to have a really solid resume as it stands right now. And currently, in my opinion, they have the best resume strictly from a Big 12 conference play perspective in the in the conference. I mean, I, I don't know who else has a top 25 win on the road, a top 25 home win. And then you beat the other first place team at home, not to mention you have a fourth win, albeit against the worst team in the Big 12 in Oklahoma State. But anyway, Texas Tech can add to their resume. They go on the road. Their next matchup against, uh, well, the number 11 Oklahoma Sooners out in Norman, a 1 p.m. tip-off on ESPN+. Plus. Texas Tech actually moved up to number 20 in the AP poll while the Sooners moved up four spots to number 11. It'll be a top 20 matchup in Norman Saturday afternoon on ESPN+. Plus. All right, before we get to the outlook of the Big 12, reminder, be sure to like the video, smash that subscribe button to stay in the know on not only Texas Tech men's basketball all year long, but the latest Big 12 men basketball updates. As soon as the bracket drops, I will have four videos breaking down each region and who I think comes out of it, who are the marquee players in that region. So you're going to want to stay in the know. And obviously, I'm going to give my thoughts on each Big 12 team's slot in the NCAA tournament. So if you're going to want to see those videos, hit that subscribe button and like the video right now. All right, the Bracketology Outlook, as it stands right now for the Big 12 on January 23rd, ESPN has 10 bids. Then you got Bracketville with nine, as well as CBS Sports with nine bids as well. This isn't shocking, right? I, I don't think that people are surprised by this. The thing that's more shocking to me, and this isn't a slight, uh, at these conferences. I'm not trying to take a jab or anything like that. But I know that the Mountain West Conference was projected for like five teams. I get it. They're having a good year. They, they really are. But you're telling me that the 10th team in the Big 12 isn't better than the fifth best Mountain West team? I, I, I mean, with how historically good this conference is this year. Legitimately, I think there's a scenario, albeit very, very slim, that 12 teams get in. Will it happen? Probably not. I give it like maybe a 2% chance, but the teams are good enough to do it. Looking at UCF, I mean, UCF is going to be a 500 team in the Big 12, and they've already beaten Kansas and Texas, right? And one of those was a road victory down in Austin, and the other one, nobody gave them a shot. They were 16 and a half point dogs against Kansas, okay? So this, this league is just absolutely loaded. I think since he gets in, um, obviously BYU is going to get in and then Houston, you have three of the four new teams to the conference slated to get in the NCAA tournament right now. Then you have a team in Texas tech, prime example, you're number one of a new coach. They're doing a phenomenal job. Jerome Tang basically had to reload his whole roster. They lost everybody except for, I think three, maybe four guys, right? Phenomenal job by Jerome Tang and what they're doing. We know Kansas is Kansas. Houston is arguably a top five team in the country when everything is going right for them. Um, and don't even get me started when it comes to, you know, their historic defense. There's so many teams in this league that are good that it's really going to be interesting to see where it goes. And does the carnage almost like view this conference differently in the sense of, okay, well, there's a team over here with a 22 and seven record per se in a lesser conference, right? But there's a Big 12 team over here that's barely above 500. They went 7-11 and 11 in league play. Should they be in over this mid-major? I think the answer is an unequivocal yes. But will the committee see that? I, I don't know. And I don't know if anybody else does right now. But it's very interesting to see because if you ask me right now, and it's a testament to the, those four schools and how they performed in year number one of the toughest conference in America. Shout out to Houston, BYU, Cincy, and UCF. They've all been impressive. Um, this team is, or this league, excuse me, is the best it's ever been. 
period. And it's about to get better because you're about to have schools like Arizona in the mix, Utah in the mix. Arizona State's not too bad. Colorado as well. I mean, Arizona's another blue blood, in my opinion. You're about to add them to the mix. So just really historic stuff by the Big 12 this year. I think when it's all said and done, if you ask me, and I'm about to ask you guys this question, I think they probably end up with 10. I think ESPN probably hits the nail on the head right now um, in Joe Lenardi. But you tell me the Big 12 Conference will have blank team bids in the NCAA tournament. How many you got? Double digits? You got nine. You don't think they're going to get that double digit uh, bid league status? Let me know down below in the comments. And one more time, if you want 100% free Texas Tech daily videos to keep you up to date, not only on Texas Tech men's basketball, Big 12 men's basketball, Big 12 football, Texas Tech football, and everything in between, you know what to do. Hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell to join the most engaging Texas Tech community here on YouTube in the Back to 12 podcast channel.